government and SSDI is good because it's something that comes in for to help people, but it doesn't give you nearly enough to make to, to survive. I mean, they give me nine something, and then I have to pay out a two hundred dollars spend down just to get Medicaid coverage. I am disabled. There's not enough advocates. There's not enough people to get them through um, problems with Medicaid, Medicare. Um, there's just not enough counselors out there to really help the disabled. I have a disability, want to work, but can't, and you're making me pay a spend down. They need the insurance through the government to help them because a lot of them can't get a job or don't want to get a job because they feel as if they can't do it and they're just more worried about money and less concerned about the actual needs of the person. There's places that will help you, help you get through your injury, but there's nobody there to help you get there. And I, I found a couple like residential resources from Boston Spa, I will name drop, because these guys were awesome. The people at the NHTD program from Sunnyview Rehab were awesome. If I did not have those two ladies, Barbara Cataldo, and Maureen Van Wert, if I did not have those two ladies in my life, I wouldn't be where I'm at in Scotia. To keep a positive outlook on things and uh, that the most important things really are friends, family, your health, and not objects and, and a, uh, um, possessions and, and, and that kind of thing. It, life isn't all about money to make you happy. I mean, obviously you need it to live, but. You can still have a life beyond your injury. Normally, quadriplegics can't drive. Normally, quadriplegics can't manually move a wheelchair. They can't get, I've seen him get himself into bed once, once or twice. You know, he just breaks all barriers. He goes above and beyond to prove to himself, not even to anybody else, but just to prove to himself that he's human. You know, he's not classified as a quadriplegic. He's classified as a person. You gotta talk about your injury. You can't run from it. If you run from it and try to act like you're not injured, you're just fooling yourself. It's important to cry. Get, if you don't, you have to cry, you have to talk about it. My mindset has always been, you know, it could always be worse. You know, there's, when I see patients, you know, here that there are higher level injuries, you can't even move their arms or, you know, brain injuries or, you know, little kids that have been injured and haven't even been able to experience life yet. You know, I look at all those things and then I kind of look at myself and go, you know, what do I have to complain about? You know, I'm lucky enough to be able to move my arms. There are a lot of quadriplegics out there that have given up. And the whole thing is to learn not to give up, not to give up on your passions. I mean, Doug's going to radio and television now because he has a purpose. When you lose a purpose, when you lose um, no having no goals, which a lot of quadriplegics, that's what happens to them. They give up on their goals. Um, then it's like you don't exist. And I think Doug can teach a lot of quadriplegics that it's never good to give up. Don't let that chair hold you back from chasing your dream. Don't let that crutch hold you back from chasing your dream. Don't let that disability that somebody else doesn't even see hold you back from chasing after your dream. I say now, if I wake up and I'm healthy, it's a good day. But I want that family, I want that house, I want the kids, I still want that. And I don't feel because I'm in this injury and that I can't have that. Well, I want to be treated just like everybody else. No, I'm, I'm Doug. And I know he will walk again one day. We'll be there watching him.